somewhere along the way, and maybe it was from things I learned in church, maybe it was from the way I was raised, I learned I wasn't supposed to feel sad or angry or scared. I was supposed to be okay. And so every time I would experience sadness or fear or anger, these emotions that I, I learned not to feel, my brain just wanted it to stop. My brain would attack it like, like it was a disease or a virus that just it would attack it and judge it and condemn it and tell me why I shouldn't feel that way. And I really never gave myself permission to feel what I actually feel. And then in turn, I haven't given other people permission to feel what they feel. So let me tell you my hopes for us here. I want us to trade lonely and isolated lives that experience brief bursts of connectedness for intimately connected lives that know only brief bursts of feeling alone. What would that even look like for you? We're gonna find out. I know it's a crazy, audacious hope, but this is what we were built for. This family, this village, this sisterhood, it's available to us. Even if it feels impossible to you right now, we can build it. God gave us a roadmap to build it. What am I believing wrongly about God? So that began a two-year journey through the familiar stories of Jesus in the book of John. I needed to see how Jesus lived. I needed to see how he lived with a weighty calling, with suffering of friends, with, with joy and abundance. And sure enough, I went into John believing Jesus wanted something from me. And today that has shifted. He actually wants so much more for me. In these weeks we have together, we're gonna stick with what Paul says. We're gonna look at the letters of Paul, specifically in the book of Philippians. And we're gonna see how Paul sets his mind on hope. He sets his mind on Jesus. And Paul writes more about the mind than anyone else in the Bible. And I, I believe it's because he knew that how we think will turn into how we live. And he said, God, I want your marked race for me. And let me tell you, he's creative. He will somehow take target runs and turn them into saving souls. And he will somehow take diaper changes and turn that into our sanctification and our time with him. And he will somehow take cubicles and the loneliness of that and turn them into little prayer chambers where people are actually growing and knowing their father more so that when they walk out of that, they actually can look at people in the eye and not be insecure, but actually meet me that's right in front of them. See, he wants to redeem the everyday and the normal and turn it into eternal stories. But that's what scares me is that, not that we're stuck in the mundane, but that we don't see that it's eternal.